Welcome to my lecture online to get a better understanding of what a diet is, a tensor of rank 2. We try to present it here by drawing three vectors on the three faces of this cube. Now let's say that this cube represents a piece of a beam. Let's say we have a beam and we end up cutting the beam and looking at the surface or the beam doesn't have to be an I-beam, it could simply be a wooden beam that has a solid cross-section. And so let's see here that we have a solid cross-section and we want to know what the stress is at that particular location along the cut. Now that stress is going to have a magnitude and a direction, and that can be expressed by the sum of these three vectors. We have one vector which is pointing in the x-direction, one vector which is pointing in the y-direction, and one vector which is pointing in the z-direction. Those three components, because those three vectors are three components, together add up to the tensor, or at least a portion of the tensor, that is along the face that cuts across the x-axis, for example, this would be the yz plane cutting across the x-axis. And at that location, I have a vector that describes the stress at that location. And that vector is represented by these three components right here. Now, when we take a look here on the, when we cut the beam along this plane right here, this would then be what we call the zx plane. It cuts across the y-axis, perpendicular to the y-axis, and let's say that we want to know the stress at that location right there. This vector here represents the stress, which is the sum of the three components, the component in the x-direction, the component in the y-direction, and the component in the z-direction, and that is represented by the, the next three components right here. Or we can cut the beam across the z-axis, so that we have the xy plane right here. We want to determine the stress at that location. That is represented by this vector right here. And so that vector would be the sum of the three components, the x component, the y component, and the z component. Together, add up to this particular vector. That vector represents the stress, magnitude, and direction across the face on the x y plane which is cut across the z-axis and that's represented by these three components in our matrix. Unfortunately not all textbooks or all sources will keep this kind of, of um, structure. I have seen examples where they actually have the vectors going this way for the x plane, the y plane, or I should say the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis, and that of course causes a lot of confusion. So you have to be sure which way it goes. It all has to do with the two numbers representing the nine elements, or the nine, the nine components. So you have the first subscript and the second subscript. In this particular example, the first subscript represents the axis that was cut. So if the x-axis is cut, we have what we call the yz plane. These three components, when you see the first subscript, that's the y, that represents that the cut is across the y-axis, and so in this case, the cut is across the y-axis, so it gives us the xz plane, and for the third set of components, notice the first subscript is z, that means we're cut across the z-axis, exposing the xy plane. Again, make sure you understand from the description, from the context, which way these components have been represented. For example, which way the subscript of the components have, have been represented? Are the three vectors represented by the components cut like this, or are the three vectors represented by the components like this? Again, it depends on the textbook you're using or the reference you're using. Just always make sure the first subscript represents what, and the second subscript represents what. After that, either way works just fine as long as we stay consistent, and so we'll, we'll adhere to keeping this kind of format going, where we have the three vectors going horizontally. So this represents a cut across the x-axis, a cut across the y-axis, and a cut across the z-axis. So that's how we keep track of which way the vectors are oriented. And this is how we have the three sets of vectors representing the stresses at the three faces of that cube. And that's how it's done.